beat them. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy around, but if four guys pull not, uh, box cutters out and I'm on a plane, I'd say, men, let's beat their, you know, what? Let's go. I mean, it would just be absolutely those guys. I don't care how tough they think they are. You're, you're the attacker. You don't have the high ground. I'm going to stomp you into the ground. I'm going to hurt you bad. And I, do, I cannot believe those flights full of men, a lot of them veterans, defense contractors, you name it. Some of them were guys that had been out of the military five years. I mean, I don't believe, I mean, imagine walking into a military bar and pulling a box cutter out and going, I'm going to, you know, kick your butt, do what I tell you. They would get up and literally break your arm and, and probably break your neck. I mean, I just don't buy it. I mean, do you buy that nobody fought back on 9-11? No, absolutely not. And uh, the other thing, too, you can look, you can look at the passenger manifest and go through that and see if there's any people that, that actually stick out. There may be somebody that they want to get rid of, so they just took the whole plane down remotely. That's a possibility. Look, I, again, I lean towards the fact that we know they have the remote systems. It could have been done by any third party or government or agency or corporation. You're right. And maybe I'm just being influenced by the photos of the Iranians. And, and again, they're probably completely innocent. It's just that when they stage stuff, they hype it. And there's no hype associated with this about some agenda they've got right now. I mean, Boston bombing, they were lined up, they were ready. Sandy Hook, Aurora, they were lined up, they were ready. Turned out Bloomberg had his Twitter campaign set the, the day before saying, get ready. I mean, we really caught them with their pants down on this one. Because the scripting, don't let a good crisis go to waste. There's no scripting here, and so it's just, it's an incredible mystery. Thank you so much, Randy. Great points. Chad in Canada, thanks for holding her on the air. Hello. Hey, brother. How's it going? Good. Good. I got some extremely good weather up here. I think uh, we're trading uh, our bad weather with you guys down there here in the last couple of years. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little... I mean, I've been looking at this, too, and I think the... Uh, you know, if it is a terrorist event, would you not think that they would sort of be all over that and glorify that because they'd actually have something real they could use to, to further an agenda? Here's what I found because they follow playbooks. The old rule was when there's real terrorism into the 80s, you don't cover it or talk about it because it gives the terrorist attention. And I've confirmed and talked to real sources that there have been power plants blown up, uh, people killed, all sorts of terror attacks that were real carried out mainly by the Iranians is tit for tat, because that's, that's the only real military opposition. Saudi Arabia and Al-Qaeda, that's all synthetic. That's why we know that attack was fake as well. Saudi Arabia wasn't invaded, even though 15 of the so-called hijackers of the 19 came from there. So there's a lot of points that go into it, but the, I, in my experience, when the Iranians stage something, the West doesn't give it attention. Or when another group does it, they don't cover it. Real terror attacks do not get covered. Fake ones get covered. And, and I only learned this last decade from watching it uh, and, then, and then researching stuff that goes on. But everybody knows you don't give terrorist attention. You don't give in to terrorist demands. You don't. That was always what you did to, I mean, my God, change the whole world because some terrorist hit us. That's empowering the terrorist. That's the terrorist winning whoever they are. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, I do. You know, and I think maybe my only other possibility, I know there were some talks of possible North Korean missiles aloft, uh, but I don't know what type of damage a missile does to a plane in order to break up its debris so it couldn't be found. I agree, uh, and, 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 and Kim Jong-un was elected with 100% of the vote, so he is not a dictator. Did you hear that today? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I got one last point, or actually a question for you, Alex. Uh, uh, just skipping, because you've been talking about 9-11 a little bit today. Uh, have you received or looked at uh, Dr. Judy Wood's book? Where does the towers go? Yeah, I mean, I've always said there's a lot of weird anomalies and things going on at the towers. I've just stuck with what I could prove. And they've made a faux controversy uh, out there about that that I never covered uh, toasted cars and, and energy weapons and all that. And that's not true. I mean, I've had Ventura on covering it. I've let them plug their stuff. I've interviewed some of the people. But then when it becomes, you better have someone on, not from her, but from others, or, or, or else. I mean, I remember one guy one time sent me an email, and he said, you're going to have me on to expose the Vatican, or I'm going to expose you as working for him. And I sent an email back saying, well, I'd be happy to interview you for your views on the Vatican, but not being threatened. It's like coming up to like coming up to a woman at a bar and saying, go out with me or I'm going to punch you in the nose. I mean, 
she's going to call the bouncer and have you thrown out. I mean, that's not how you get. So I just, it, it's, I, I'm not going to have her on my show. So that's the end of it. Ever. Uh, because, because what happens is there was all these attacks on Stephen Jones, the professor and others about thermite that was clearly there. And there was all these attacks just by a whole camp in infighting, cognitive dissonance, Cass Sunstein type, type stuff. And I just will not be part of it. I mean, people that I gave platforms and were super nice to, uh, you know, professor out of Minnesota, others, you know, later came out and, and just created this whole fake controversy thinking I would then attack them, that they would get attention. And what they got was no attention. Now, after the fact, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell people why I did that. Uh, but I, I saw some real sophisticated operative type stuff coming out during that whole period. Whereas Mark Dice attacked me with a bunch of made up stuff. I saw him lose weight. He didn't look as focused as he used to look. I like Mark. I called him up. You know, I said, have you been going through a lot in your life? I bet you have. And you know what? I, he goes, yeah, how do you know that? And, I said, and he's a good guy. I said, I forgive you. You tried to destroy me. You swore, you know, your best you could. You failed. I wanted you to fail first, let you know that I love you in Christ and that I forgive you. You're a talented guy who's a great author and a great mind. And uh, you, 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 you do great work. So I'm going to promote you now. And I'm going to promote you to Drudge and everybody else. How's that sound? But I only did that because he's a good guy. He's not an operative. And I'm not saying Judy Wood's an operative. I'm saying that whole constellation. Like one of the guys involved that later came out in the documentary about crowdsourcing that was award winning was in the CIA. And, and so that's what was happening. They didn't want us looking at bombs in the towers and the collapse. They want it to be fantastical space beams or ground-based weapons, which I know they have. But you can't prove it. I can prove the hijackers were trained at U.S. military bases. I can prove they were ordered to be given visas. I can prove cell phones don't work at 33,000 feet. I can prove those phone calls weren't made. The FBI admits it. I can't prove that the towers demolished and went down from some type of plasma resonance beam that vibrated the metal into pieces, which I know they've got. I mean, there's some weird stuff kinetically going on in toasted cars and all the rest of it. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. So, so I don't poo-poo any of those people. All right, I'm out of time. I apologize to all the other callers. Call me back tomorrow. Nightly News is tonight, 7 o'clock Central. We're going to go to this McAdoo, Leanne McAdoo uh, report. And we're going to break down uh, the fact that the folks at South by Southwest uh, at, at the computer conference, most of them did not know why they were there to hear Snowden. Even after he spoke, they just knew it was trendy. It was really cool. And, and my problem with South by Southwest is about 99% of the people who are there are being abused and fed on by predators. There's, there's no real market there. There's no real, some people may make connections. Some people may be successful, but low level, it's just a bunch of folks there who literally believe that they're going to be stars. I mean, I've heard conversations on the street when I've been down there, like, yeah, I came here, I'm going to be a movie star now. After I go get money, I spent all my money. And they, they you're not going to be an NBA player. You're five feet tall. You're not going to be a movie star, okay? In the Hollywood system that's collapsing. Let's go to Leanne McAdoo's report. I'm here at the Austin Convention Center during South by Southwest. Edward Snowden is the keynote speaker now. We're going to go around and find out what people think the impact surveillance has had on the tech industry. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very well. Where are you guys from? Uh, Chicago. Ch oh, Chicago. Chicago. Glad to be here in Texas. Yeah, there's sun, so that's nice. Where are you from? I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Well, welcome. Are you enjoying Austin? I am. I am. Lots Wonderful. of fun. Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Good. Where are you from? Here. From Austin. Welcome. Are you excited about Edward Snowden being the keynote speaker today? I think it's pretty cool, yeah, but I don't really want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you got glasses on. No one can see who you are. So are you all familiar with Edward Snowden? Yeah. Yep. How do you feel the information that he shared has affected the tech industry? Mm. Ooh, very good, very good question. I think it's made everybody more aware and more nervous about, you know, before we were kind of pushing everything out. We didn't really care about what, what it was, and we would share what we're eating for breakfast. Now it's, I would say, more, more nervous and more um, cautious about what we're doing. 
it's really unpredictable right now. I think that's why it's so interesting because there's so many different directions in which it can go and we, we struggle with it on like the government level and we struggle with it on a marketer level and we struggle with it on an everyday consumer level with all, you know, it, everyone putting their information out there through social media. Are you much more concerned and cautious now while you're doing... I'm not doing really concerned. I don't do anything sketchy on the internet, so I'm not worried. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I'm not really a private person. It seems sort of like... Um, kind of a wonderful thing to have access to someone who's divulging so much important information. I think you're crazy if you're not concerned about privacy online. You can interview my friend. <laughs> is, that, is that like, yeah. that's super techie, right? Yeah, this is pretty intense right he's now. Got a, he's got a film. Are you guys going to uh, the Edward Snowden talk right now? No, I'm, I'm not, actually. I'm going to a, a film. Are you familiar with uh, some of the things that are being leaked by Edward Snowden about how much it's affecting society? I'm not. What? I don't know what the Snowden leaks are. Is that something what? akin to the WikiLeaks? What am I supposed to say to that? Oh my goodness. You are not aware. You are building a mobile app and you do not know how this is going to... How are you going to protect your, your people that are going to download your app? Well, I just have to say thank you for keeping me informed. I'll probably have to do some more research and look into it. Yes. Do you think people should have a right to privacy on the internet or we should have internet rights? Uh, the internet is, uh, you can live your life without it, so buyer beware, right? Mm. Um, if you want to use that kind of technology, it, it comes with that kind of a catch, and that's, that's probably okay. So you're, you're, you don't mind that you're being watched like when you do yoga via the Xbox and stuff like that, or like your webcam photos are going to somebody at the NSA? Yeah, I guess that is kind of sketchy. Um, I think it's really scary, and I think it's something um, that's really real that we kind of all need to think about in everyday lives, and we're so willing to offer up all of the information. I actually am a marketer by trade, so I understand how um, how much we rely on that sort of information, so it's I think it's a really delicate balance. Um, the fact that the government is surveilling um, and that they are going to be monitoring electronic transmissions I mean you know that's something that we should be aware of or we're, or we're naive. Do you guys catch Edward Snowden at all? Uh, yeah, yeah but I don't want to be on camera though. All right. How do you feel about the way that WikiLeaks gets whistleblowers information out there versus how uh, Snowden's information is being given to the public? What is how I feel about the difference between how weekly did and how he did? Yeah, all at once versus slow drips every couple of months. It seems a little more responsible to do it the way Snowden's doing it. I think if you're going to give it out, give it out. It's going to take I mean, look how long it took to go through the WikiLeaks, right? I think we're still going through the WikiLeaks stuff, right? Yeah. So, um, someone who actually used to work for Homeland Security, I did a long time ago, uh, information, if you just throw it out there, then let people decipher to bite what they want and kind of do it properly instead of filtering it through, giving time to people to change the message, so to speak. As a, you know, sort of a population, we have a really short attention span and a fairly short memory for even major events. I was talking to someone who um, worked on the legal team um, when uh, the Enron affair was happening and really like things like that just disappear from the radar. People forget really sort of pivotal, important things. So the more persistence and, and sort of incremental growth of information um, he can provide, the better, I think. I think it's just the beginning. I think it was just the, uh, the opening of, of things that are to come. As long as Americans continue to use tools that are developed by advertisers, then we can't expect to have privacy, right? So Google Chrome is the number one browser. Google's an advertising company. Do you think we're all just kind of being conditioned to just be okay with it and accept it? Uh, no. I mean, you have an option to either use it or not use it. And when you use it, you're, it's, you're putting yourself up at risk. So. But what about all the people walking around with the Google glasses on? I think those are silly. <laughs> yeah. So. Can't opt out of that. No, you can't. Or just run away, I guess. I feel like maybe people are a little bit desensitized now. Like, it seems that people should be outraged, but they're kind of like, ah. Uh, yeah, 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 I agree. Um, um, it's a, unfortunately evolution of this technology that we don't have control. We did not know where it was going to go. Everyone's filming you everywhere. <laughs> you can't opt out anymore. 
Well, it seems like this is just the beginning of what we've heard from Snowden. A lot of people agree with the way that it's being slowly leaked out. It keeps it in the news, but it's also a little bit more responsible in the name of national security, so people sort of understand that. But it also seems like a lot of people have really desensitized. Five years ago, if you told them that they were being spied on through their webcam or via their telephone, they... We're on the march.